Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to introduce you a tool to help you code via the agentic workflow. It's called Klein. And I'm going to also introduce you the open router where you can connect the tool to some free source large language model API. First of all, let's check this openrouter.ai. This website is a unified interface for large language models. So if you check the models, you are going to see which models you can connect using this platform. And if you go to chat room, you can try to chat with different models. And in the large language model ranking, you can see how many tokens were generated using different models via this platform. And this is very informative. For example, if you want to understand in marketing use case, which type of model is called most frequently, right? Or you go to all categories, you can see which model is the top of the day, top of the week, or top of the month. And also trending. Of course, now you can see the DeepSeek R1 model. There is a free entry and it is trending in this platform. And also you can go to the quick start where you can find the documentation for this platform. It's very comprehensive. But today we're going to focus on how to link it to client and help you code automatically. Okay, here you can see when you search client in the extension uh, marketplace, you can see it is uh, in the first place and it has already 538,000 downloads and you can just uh, install it in your Visual Studio and be ready. Uh, then I already created uh, a directory for this demo. I'm going to call this extension. I can also uh, rearrange the client window here and you can see here are some of the prompts I already used before. If you are the first time here, you need to configure the API key. Okay, so basically using client, you can choose different model providers and use their corresponding API keys. For example, you can also use LM Studio and Olama to link with your local hosted models. And here I'm going to use Operator because uh, I want to show you more choices and especially some of the models which can be accessed freely via the openrouter.ai. So after you choose this one, usually the first time when you um, choose this option, it will jump to the openrouter.ai and it will give you this uh, API key. And now after inserting the API key, we can go to model selection. First of all, uh, all the models in the first stage you can use for free because you have a free quota. Some of the models you can, uh, for example, like this one, MetaLama 3.370B Instruct, it is not free. There is a free quota, I think it's one US dollar limits. You can try all the models which require payment. And if you prefer to use free models directly, you can also do that. Let's try free models. So as you can see, there are many free model choices. And let's try the trending model, DeepSeek R1 model, the free version. Okay, before we start, I want to tell you that um, DeepSeek R1 model is very good for reasoning and so on. But for coding, it is not always very efficient and very capable. You need to understand, for example, like a Claude Sonnet model can be incorporated with client seamlessly. And during the conversation, you can feel that it can complete the code efficiently with less error. But for reasoning model, this is not 100% necessary. That is a highly capable reasoning model can provide you with a better coding experience. So you need to try them to understand the difference. But for now, I choose the DeepSeek RM3. So let's see how it goes. After choosing this model, and you can also choose these functions like auto approve, read file and directories, edit files. Okay, I choose them more. So let the model do the job. So I'm going to ask it, okay, write a Russian cubic game and run it. Okay, so now you can see the client extension is running. It is handling this task and also showing you the token usage, context window, API cost. This model is now free, so you do not need to worry about the inference cost. So you can see here, the model starts to reason. 
the speed is not so bad. I mean, as a free tier API, the speed is very acceptable. So as you can see here, it already goes to the execution stage and the code is being written. One more thing I want to share with you is that you see here, I choose the act option, which means that I want the model to generate a response and act on my behalf immediately. But if you want to be more prudent, you can choose plan. And so you are going to see some response first. Then you choose act when you feel ready. Okay. As you can see here, uh, in the middle, it actually breaks. Okay. This model is able to offer high level reasoning. However, it cannot handle the coding task like a Claude Sonnet model. Okay. So sometimes if you see the glitch here, the, the genetic workflow will actually go to request the response again. Or sometimes you see error here, you just retry. This is one type of the limitation of DeepSeq R1 model in this scenario. So let's wait for a while and see how it goes. Okay, so now it actually completed another API request. Okay, there is a additional reasoning, okay? And we do not see any actions now. You can see it uh, goes to the reasoning again. And let's see when it finishes reasoning and come back to coding. Okay, now it is back to coding. Let's see. So on the right hand side, you can see it continues to write the HTML file. I think this is good. Okay, I think this file is already completed. And let's see, there is another API request. You can see each time there is a API request, it actually structures the prompt based on the current step. So it is evolving during the whole process. You do not need to um, click uh, continue or something. Okay, now it goes to the next step to write the CSS file. Okay, I think it completed. Let's go down. Of course, whenever you feel the need to reverse, you can click this one to restore. The, this current step. Okay. It is similar to Windsurf, but it is already incorporated in VS Code, so which offers you some continuity. You do not need to change your uh, programming software from VS Code to Windsurf. Now we can see it is writing the game.js file. Okay, looks good in general. Okay, sometimes if it uh, suddenly stops at a certain step, largely is because the model capability so maybe it will break here and you have to wait for the uh, workflow to resume okay okay luckily it actually goes on actually this file stopped at a certain point so there is another api request okay like i said sometimes when you use a model which is not very good at coding or involved in this genetic workflow, you may see error like this. So what can you do? You can start a new task, re-describe what you want to do, or you can click retry. Let's click retry. Let's see if it can continue. Usually it can do that. Yeah, and you can see uh, the prompt actually put our existing conversation, existing piece of code, back to the model yeah so it uh, goes back to the reasoning step and considering the context window size you see it's 128,000 tokens so it's more than enough for us to program a small software or small program okay let's see okay it goes back to the file yes it continues the stopped step and we can see the continuous to go okay now i think this file is uh, finished let's see okay so in this step it actually gave a feedback to the model describing that this file is completed and you see now it is uh, requesting the execution of this program but i don't think the model actually gave a meaningful results or feedback so we are now seeing some errors here yes so Let's see, if it is going to stop at some point, we can either manually run the program or retry again. Seems like the model has figured out how to resolve the issue. And you can see the command line is already run. So we can see the program here. Let's try. Yeah, it works well. Yeah, but uh, there are some problem. For example, there is only one block falling down. After this block reached the bottom line, I cannot move again. So let's go back. Actually, the genetic workflow is asking the model to use a tool calling. I'm not sure if it is uh, capable, but at this moment, okay, it actually stopped. Let's try. 
Okay, let's try again. We see the issue. Let's try to uh, ask the model to improve. Uh, improve the current program of Russian cubic gain. Now the shape reach water, but the mix but does not continue and debug and improve. Let's run it. Okay, so let's see. Okay, as you can see here, there is a provider return error. Okay, let's retry. Okay, now it comes back online. Okay, now it intends to check the logic of the game file. Now it attempts to edit the file, but we get an error. We can retry. Okay, now it uh, continues to reason about the potential issue and how to debug the error. I described it goes to check every single step I think it's quite thorough okay now it starts editing the program okay it made some changes let's see okay there is an error I think okay now it is back online that's okay this is a common error I usually get using this model it is called the language model did not provide any assistant messages if now we can go to next step okay it is not running let's see okay it is uh, still trying to figure out the issue so it does not realize that the html file is now showing nothing okay it actually shows um complete okay so let's try again run this command okay it shows nothing okay so as you can see Previously, I clicked the run command. Okay, usually when the task is completed, you can see the different choices. It's very clear. But it uh, now we still have the issue. I say HTML shows nothing. Well, I have to say using a reasoning model to do the coding job is a very good choice. As you can see, if we have some glitch in the process, okay, either the capability of the model or the interaction with the extension um, the general time spent to develop this app is uh, quite long i mean the inference speed from operator.ai is good or we can say from different provider as we see now is okay but now you can see uh, the debugging and also the uh, agentic step completion are not very ideal. Okay, now it gets to um, change the file. See, okay, I think I completed already. Yeah, let's see if this time we can have this game running without any issue. Okay, it meets the issue again and we're waiting for its further response. Now it's back and did some editing. Let's see. Okay, now it opens the HTML file, but it shows nothing. All right, let's try another way. Now it is still calling the API, but no problem. We can at the same time try the HTML again. Ah, okay. So I think the issue is about Chrome. Let's try the game. Yeah, it starts to drop. Yeah, but you see, now we can see the next shape, but the logic here is not good because it actually covers the existing shape. But let's see if it can stop in the end. Okay, game over. Okay, now we see the issue. Um, it reported that the task completed. Okay, good. Um, okay, let's just directly cancel the process. I don't think there will be a problem. Okay, I would say now the issue is identified. We do not use Chrome, just start. But the shapes still overlap after reaching to but over the previous one. Check the game logic. Let's see. Okay, there are some issues here. As you can see now, you can see the context window. We have already used 20,000 tokens. 
it's still within the range of the maximum context window so we are fine and you can also see our prompt token is about 37,000 our results for the response token around 504 I mean the thinking process of DeepSeq R1 is very interesting. You see, sometimes when it reaches a certain conclusion, it goes to wait. Perhaps the issue is it kind of stops at some point and then reflect again and try to figure out if the direction is right. This is a uh, very interesting. Okay, now it is back on editing the file. Let's see. Okay, I think we can try this program at the same time because now it is not uh, editing anything. Let's try. Ah, it seems to be working now. Oh yes, it already solved the problem. And you see, although the problem is already solved, the model, the inferencing is still happening, right? So it should have uh, stopped uh, the prompting, but now it is still going. Anyway, let's uh, in the same time test the game. Let's see if the score can be recorded. Okay, let's try. We should have one. Okay, it's 100. Okay, very good. Let's see if it can stop. Okay, game over. Very good. So now I'm going to ask the model to stop. Okay, because it is already successful. Let's do a quick recap. So basically, we need to understand OpenRouter.ai, which is a platform which offers us the opportunity to access different large language models. It is very convenient. Then we use Klein as a very important agentic workflow extension in VS Code. So we can use it to call the different models from OpenRouter.ai and we can just prompt the model that we choose and let the coding start. But as I said before, today I'm showing you the interaction with uh, DeepSeq our model. The coding capability is okay, but the overthinking may not be very efficient for us to code effectively and efficiently. So always try different model. And as I said before, remember, you can always go back to check which model is the hot model is better for which use case and make a good choice. I wish you liked this video. Please don't forget to like it, leave a comment if you have any doubt. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Bye bye.